Good afternoon, welcome to our Thursday Lives. Life and lives, because you are live in the life of me, Nadine Fosler. And with a live chocolate paint how to tutorial. It's lovely to be back. I've been away, I've been visiting a beautiful country on the western side of Africa called Namibia. Namibians, all of you. It was a pleasure to meet you. My heart is filled with joy and love. After my trip with one of my colleagues, Phil Ferreira, and the time that we've spent in Namibia was truly um, food for the soul. So thank you for all the love. Thank you for the hospitality. Thank you for an absolute amazing time. It's lovely to be back in my own country the sunny South Africa, where at the moment it is very chilly. So wherever you are watching from, sit back, relax and enjoy, as this is a session where I am going to inspire you to be creative. Now today we are going to work with a drying clay. It's a creative session and I'm just sharing ideas because this is my life's mission to inspire you to be creative. And the air drying clay I'm going to work with is a brand called Jovi, if I pronounce it correctly, but this is what it looks like. And I have used some of it. I have put it back in an airtight bag. And I'm just going to start showing you how to be creative with a stencil, other than just painting with it. And with a chocolate paint range, we have a beautiful stencil range. Starting from very tiny, these 10 by 10 centimeter stencil range and the range is vast. These are only a few of the examples. Here are some of the A6 inspirations cause the World Rugby Cup is around the corner and we are avid Springbok supporters. So, um, we are I want to share with you how you can be creative with stencils other than applying it on your wall surfaces or on furniture, but also to get the rest of the family involved. And this is a creative, fun idea to actually also include your children. Maybe make some coasters for dad for the rugby season around the corner or lovely coasters as a gift idea with Christmas around the corner. I can't even believe that I'm saying this. Um, as we are all approaching that time of the year, almost where we start planning and prepping um, gift ideas for teachers, for um, secret Santas. So what I'm doing is I'm just pressing down some of this air dry, dry clay. The rest that I'm not using, I'm putting back in an airtight container so that it doesn't dry out. And I'm pressing down another vast range of choco stencils. Doesn't matter what size you have, can also be used for this. Okay, so this is a nice workout session. So I've danced in Sumep this weekend. Um, and that was quite a workout. And now, Griet Marie, I haven't been to the gym yet, no time. But I am doing a live with clay. So I'm pressing it down. Next, I'm going to select my stencil. So there's really beautiful designs. I just took some from the St. Francis store. I'm going to use the one that I've prepared earlier today. So I make sure that my clay is more or less five millimeters thick on my board. Okay, and now all excess you can use again. I just want to make sure that it more or less fits onto my 10 by 10 centimeter stencil design and excess you can use again later. And now what I'm going to do, my brayer, you can also use a glass, you can use a cake dough roller, anything that you have that's round and that can actually press the stencil onto the air drying clay. Lovely for gift ideas. 
or just a big creative lovely idea even for children's parties if you want to get the children creative or even um bridal showers okay so now i use a normal knife and what i do with my stencil still in position i just cut away excess air drying clay that i can use again so i'm definitely going to use that so that nothing goes to waste And I am sure you will also come up with many more ideas. This is something that I say every Thursday live. This is just inspiration. And then you allow the creative juices to flow. So there's my coaster. I'll now use my knife just to make sure that I remove it from the surface. So it can dry, but it doesn't dry onto my surface. I do like the texture that my board actually leaves at the back. It looks authentically like, like um, pottery. And then the stencil design is sitting on my coaster. Now I can, I can press any um, evenness into position. You can even wet your finger with water. So I have just some water on my finger. And I am just making sure that the edges are nicely, neatly rounded off. I just have water in this bowl. Okay, and now I'm going to leave this to air dry. Now, due to my day-to-day -day responsibilities, I haven't had much time. But yes, some coasters that I've prepared with Kaylee earlier today. They are not completely dry yet, but you can see how nicely this air dry clay actually does dry. And now I'm going to share some ideas with you. So I have prepared some as inspiration. I just want to share with you. They are still drying. Um, yes, color inspiration for something. And I'm going to show you step by step how to do it. Something very colorful very Moroccan, even a nice Portuguese vibe going on here. Or you can have something more muted, but also some color inspiration with just a dry brush technique on. Or if you are, an, are, an, are a neutral lover, and remember, you need to do what makes you happy and use colors that make you happy. So here's one busy drying that really looks like aged um, pottery look and vibe. Even if you used a color like Tinnus terracotta or simply Sapiwe to create a terracotta look or vibe, it would have worked. There was a question earlier today, what does Martin move like, Martin's move look like? On a surface, and here I've used Martin Smooth, but I'll show you exactly how to get this watercolor effect next. Kaylee, you need to move around, please, because we need to work close to the basin. I'm going to use the ones that I've done earlier today. Okay, so we are going to work over here. As you will see, that it's quite a messy business, um, and I'm just going to move some colors closer. So any leftover paint that you have, Choco also has the paint colors in 25 ml sample jars. But this is really an effective way of using the last bits and bobs of paint, drops of paint that you might have. Okay, and I'm going to use some stencil of just more artist brushes. And then you need some water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be playful. Now, depending on the colors that you love, you can either just use one color or incorporate a few colors. So color is a personal choice. And something that I often say is, you select colors that works in your space and that makes you feel happy. I'm just here to give inspiration 
the steps and the techniques will remain the same. Doesn't matter what color you use. Okay, so I'm going to be playful and add some Simply Superior. I'm also going to add some Ashat. I'm going to use for inspiration, color inspiration, some Danny Stee. Okay, this could also just have been one color and then you just cover the entire surface with that one color. And also some Shorty's story. For those that don't know, Choco has a story, airy color of the Choco paint range has a story and a person that it represents. So there is more to Choco than just paint colors. I always say that Choco is about, is about passion and people. And if you don't know the stories, you need to get hold of our book or look more at our socials so that you can see what our story is all about. There's a new range on our YouTube channel, Choco Paint that tells the stories of some of the very special person, people, during the month of August, that is Women's Month, on our YouTube channel, Choco Paints. Tertia Steel is the last color that I've used. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the tap. So your coaster is semi-dry or it can be completely dry. I just didn't have time today to prepare it well in advance for this session and what I do is I just let the colors wash off and I use my fingers to just let the colors flow and now what I will do there you can see, you can blend with your finger and you can just let dry. And I'm gonna do the other one as well, just for those that love neutral, how beautiful is that? Make sure that the edges are nicely, nicely rounded off. You can twist with the water still on the surface, different directions. I just wanna mute the blue corner a bit. And now I'm going to let that dry, rinse off my hands and just do one in a neutral Martin smooth color and also give some inspiration. I think once you start playing around and playing ex and experimenting with the colors, you actually don't want to stop. So yeah, I have Martin smooth. I don't have another clean brush. So I'm just going to use my finger. Don't do this. You don't want to contaminate your paint with water on your hands and dipping your hands in your paint. So don't do what I do. Do what I say. And I'm just wiping just a drop. You saw how little that was. It was hardly any paint. And now I'm just rinsing off excess. So that it looks like a very faded antique tile and this will be a beautiful coaster that I can use. Now what I will do is once this is completely dry, I will use our clear glaze. I'm going to show you what the packaging looks like and what I'll do is I'll dilute it three parts clear glaze and you can even just use tablespoons. Three parts glaze in a container, one part cool boiled water, and just when this is completely dry, just paint it with a very smooth 
and soft bristle artist brush onto your coaster just to make the surface stain resistant. So if there are any spills of coffee or a drink or whatever, you know you can simply just wipe it clean with a damp rag. Okay, so this is some inspiration. I am just blending these colors more because I want to. And I just want to see what it looks like through the camera. You can play with your fingers. That is stunning. Okay, so you play until you are happy. Allow to air dry. You don't need to put it in the oven or anywhere where there's excessive heat. Just normal oxygen will dry the clay. Now, for the month of August and September, we have a competition going on. Now, it doesn't matter how big or how small your projects are, this is a competition for everyone, and this is also why I shared a smaller project today. So it is either a focal wall in a space that makes huge impact, and that's bespoke and unique, and works well with all the styling elements in your space, or it is a very inspirational project that you want to share with us. So if your project has a story, and you want to share it with us, we love stories and we love the authenticity of all of you that are so creative. So for the wall spaces and inspiration on those, I'm going to take you on a journey through my house, just certain areas and then um, explain what a focal wall is all about. Some tips in terms of styling elements. If you haven't seen Crystal and Wesley's, TikTok video on how to style and how to take a picture. You will enjoy it. Some useful tips on there as well. Okay, so we are going to visit my bathroom. So come walk with me. So I have been living here for not too long. Too long. So only certain areas of my house are the way I want to look, have it look because we are working day now. So focal wall bathroom so in the bathroom you will see there's lady lisa painted at the back so that is a brown okay if you can just zoom in on the top or if you can see it so it is a brown earthy toned color and in the choco range we also have choco colors that are mixed especially for wall surfaces i must be honest i just use normal choco on these walls choco does have a built in primer a building sealer although with this being a newly built house we primed the walls first after they've been plastered and then I applied um, Lady Lisa on the wall the gray walls was painted with a charcoal colors for wall so this is a low sheen charcoal paint specifically manufactured for wall surfaces in a low sheen and that is level slide so in the space you can see this a greyish tone, which is level slide, some Lady Lisa and some shutter ply that we used as a cladding option. Okay, so this can create a feature just for inspiration. Okay, now we are going to Kaylee's room where we simply used paint, paint colours and a shape to create a focal, a focal wall. So I so badly wish that um, Mr. M, okay, yeah, he is still, I don't want to mention his name, but can you, can you see what a life of a dog looks like? So this is, this is a lazy daisy day and Buddy is sleeping on a pillow on the other side of the room. Okay, so it is from 40, nearly 40 degrees in Namibia. We are freezing in the Eastern Cape. So Kaylee's room, the entire house was painted in level slight low sheen. And the year we used choco paint, just normal choco paint, not for walls, because you can see what a small arch we've created here. And we used um, Olivia's pail on this arch on her wall with floating shelves that we also painted because they were a wooden 
um, vinyl laminated um, color before and we painted these in velvet and dry brushed the wicker, created stencil work in her frame and that is a focal wall. Now in her bathroom, yes, just a stencil behind, behind her. Um, <laughs> did you miss yourself in the mirror, Kaylee? Well done. So behind the mirror in her bathroom, we just used a chalk or stencil, a 30 by 30 centimeter stencil. And we created a pattern that forms a border behind her mirror. And no towel work was done. And this creates a feature. With a little paint, one stencil, and a little bit of effort. Okay, now we're going to the spare bedroom, the guest room. So over here, last year during the um, filming for the Choco Champs, we did this bedroom. So what we've done at the back is we did some paneling with normal pine. It's pine paneling. You apply it in the wall. You do need to drill holes. Those videos are on our YouTube channel if you haven't seen them. The lights were attached. All of these were painted so that it's actually reused decor items that we've just chalked to fit with the color scheme of the room, created our own art pieces but it still looks stylish. And for those in Namibia where I mentioned that the pillowcases, we have painted them and we use them. These are them. So here's the ones. Everything is done on Google denim. Um, this is not now a focal wall inspiration but still it is inspiration so stencil work chalk or paint you can see we wash them we use them and watercolor on these ones on these ones we've done some stenciling color she used magical marina and simply superior and then the striped one was done with masking tape and different colors yes um super sunette Simply Sapiwe, Hello Hetty, Lady Lisa, and Magical Marina. And then the same we've done. So here you can see, this is Super Sunette on this wall. Magical Marina, sorry Kelly, I'm going to have to, is on the cladding behind the bed. At the top is Super Sunette, the more neutral color above the bluish color. And then the bathroom was painted in Lady Lisa. So three, two different neutrals together. And then, yes, yeah, simply Sapiwe on this furniture piece. And Magical Marina on the paneling. And Super Sunet at the top. But this is also inspiration for a focal wall. Okay, now back to the kitchen. So when I was in Namibia, I met amazing people. And if you haven't been to that country, do yourself a favor and go visit. Because not only is it beautiful, and ranges from, from desert ocean to savannah landscapes, the people are amazing. Um, Thank you for a lovely time, Namibia. You are amazing. I'll be back as I promised. Not only did I meet amazing people, but they even showed me how to fold toilet paper. I'm going to share this with you. So, so Lumi, this is a shout out to the people in Swakopmund. Quickly look, here is a useful tip to make sure that your guest toilet looks pretty always. Okay, so what you're going to do is you are going to twist your toilet paper three times. Okay, now I hope I do this correctly. You're going to practice with me. I start at the bottom, so I hold the bottom, and what I'm going to do, I leave a small piece at the bottom, and I twist the toilet paper around my finger, my two fingers. And when I reach the end, from the back, I just 
The last piece I just pulled through. And now I make sure it looks like a rose. So when you put your to toilet paper back in your holder, you have something very special and it's so quick and easy. Isn't this beautiful? It's only in Namibia where you find toilet paper um, that you can actually find, find that toilet paper can look so attractive. So my message to all of you out there is the following. It is self-love. I think we all, and this is something that I also shared during this week, and we all are exposed to life. Do we have perfect lives? No. No, no one's life is perfect. It can't be because we're exposed to the world. We are exposed to so many things that happen to us daily. But these things are the things that actually shape and form us. But for us to grow and, and actually allow for these processes to form us, to mold us, to, to make us better, we need to love ourselves in the process. Have self-appreciation and believe in yourself. So that whatever life throws at you, the moment you have self-love and you believe in yourself, you will have the courage to, to assist the next person and to add meaning to the next person's life. So let's start with self-love this week. Just know that you are amazing and that you are capable of amazing things. Doesn't matter what your situation is. And then I'll be back next week with something very special from if, if that is how life is intended to work out from hunting. So love to you all. Appreciate yourself. Look after yourself till next week and have many beautiful and creative and colorful chocolate moments. Bye-bye.